What's up guys, I'm Paul and welcome to the channel. So are we heading for a market crash in 2022? Well honestly, I don't know. I'm not Mystic Meg. But nor does anybody else. No one knows if or even when a crash is going to happen. But there are some things going on in the world that are kind of indicators that potentially we could be heading for a market crash in 2022. So what are some of these things? So the first one of these is China and specifically the Chinese housing market because it seems as if the bubble has burst and what is most worrying about this is when you look at the value of the Chinese property market. It's valued at an estimated 55 trillion dollars which is double that of the US housing market. But why has the bubble started to burst? Well to cut a long story short big property developers over in China such as Evergrande are running out of money. It's that simple and the reason why this is happening is because when the pandemic hit, these property companies have been facing a trifecta of issues that are going to cause problems for any property developer. Number one is supply chain issues and also a rising cost of raw materials to build properties. Number two, they've had their credit lines cut, which means they can't borrow money. And number three, they've been struggling to offload their assets. Because there's no real confidence in the Chinese property market, they've been struggling to sell their existing properties. And basically, this has meant they're running out of money and they're struggling to to pay their bills, while specifically they're struggling to pay their bonds. They've already defaulted on their international bond payments, which isn't a good look for any of these companies. And likely there's going to be one of two outcomes for a large number of these Chinese property developers. Number one is they're going to go bust, or number two is they're going to end up becoming state owned. Neither of these are a real good thing for the Chinese property market because it probably is going to result in the market losing a lot of value. And even though China's economy is somewhat insulated from the rest of the world, we are still going to feel the effects of this. It's the world's second largest economy. And what could potentially happen is like with the crash of 2008, which started in the US property market, it could spread to other parts of the economy because it's very difficult to just keep one part of the economy separate. So it could spread to stock it could spread to other things within the Chinese economy. And being the world's second largest economy, we're going to feel the effects of this, especially if you're somewhat invested in China. So if you've got something like a global ETF or an emerging markets ETF, you're probably going to feel the effects of this because you're directly invested in China. So this is one thing that could potentially lead to a market crash in 2022. So the second thing is the US and specifically the Federal Reserve's monetary policy, which has been somewhat controversial since the start of the pandemic. Because basically when the pandemic hit, Jerome Powell turned on his magic money printer. I just really wanted to use this meme. But he has. He's been pumping massive amounts of money into the economy. And since June 2020, they've been buying $120 billion worth of assets every single month, split between $80 billion of treasury bonds and $40 billion of mortgage-backed securities. You know those things that helped cause the 2008 financial crash? Yeah, the Fed's been buying $40 billion worth of those a month. But in November 21, the Federal Reserve started tapering their asset purchases. Now initially this was by $15 billion a month, but they had to raise this to $30 billion a month in December. And the reason why? Inflation. Inflation is starting to run rampant in the US. In fact, they've just hit 40 year highs. And it's not just the US, other countries around the world are also suffering very high inflation. But just sticking with the US, a lot of this has been down to the Federal Reserve's monetary policy. Because since the start of the pandemic, we've been facing a supply and demand issue. Because of supply chain shortages and also labor shortages, there's been limited supply but increased demand. And this generally leads to increased prices anyway. You factor in extra money being pumped into the economy every single month and prices will increase a lot, leading to record levels of inflation. Well, the highest levels of inflation in 40 years. And the end goal with the tapering is to get to the point where they're not buying any assets on a monthly basis. Now this in itself is probably not going to affect the market all that much. But what could affect the market is raising of interest rates. And basically they need to do this in order to curb inflation. Now some of this has already been factored into the market and there was an initial scare when the Fed announced that they was going to potentially be raising interest rates in 2022. But what could cause the markets to go into a bit of a tailwind 
tailspin is if they need to be more aggressive with their interest rate rises. So they have to raise them higher and quicker than they initially anticipated. And this could really panic the market and cause a bit of a sell-off, which could lead into a market crash. But to add fuel to the fire, it was also discovered when the minutes were released from the Fed's January meeting that they also plan to reduce the value of their balance sheet. And what this means is they're looking to sell some of the assets that they've been purchasing. And what they're doing with this is they want to reduce the amount of money that's actually in the system. They want to start tightening up the monetary policy and reducing the amount of cash in the system. And this caused the markets to get a bit scared, which is why the start of 2022 has been really bad for the markets. Basically, everything's been down. It's not been great because the markets got scared. But outside of this with the Federal Reserve, there are also a couple of other things as well that are quite concerning when it comes to the US economy. The first one is Schiller's profit to earnings ratio. And as you can see from this chart, it's currently over 30. And this hasn't happened many times in history, and it's unsustainable. Basically, everything is overvalued from individual stocks to the market as a whole. Things are massively overvalued. And the only time in history where it's been higher than this was the dot-com bubble, which yeah, things were massively overvalued back then. I can just about remember that. I'm not that old. But it is, companies are massively overvalued and the stock market just cannot sustain it. But why are things overvalued? Well, basically it's been due to the Federal Reserve's monetary policy and also government policy as well, because they've been putting more money into the hands of businesses and also private investors as well. And because interest rates have been at historic lows, basically keeping money in cash has been losing money due to inflation. So people have been putting money into the stock market, hoping to get some return on their money, and it comes down to supply and demand. When you've got limited supply, but increased demand, prices are gonna go up. And basically, that's what's been happening with the stock market. Because people have been wanting to invest, prices have just gone up. The second thing to look at is also margin debt. Now, if you're not sure what margin debt is, to give a brief summary of it, it's when people borrow money from their brokerages so that they can then bet on the market. It's basically using the house's money. And when things are going well, this can mean you can make a lot of money from this because it's leverage. You're basically using somebody else's money and then you're just pocketing the difference off the top. But when things start to go down, it can have the adverse effect because you can have what's called a margin call. And this is where the companies that have made these loans want their money back. And to get their money back, they will sell off investors' positions. And this can just add to the market going in a bit of a tailspin because it's the reverse supply and demand thing. Because when there's too much supply and not enough demand, prices go down. And when there's more stuff coming into the market because of all these margin calls, it can cause the market to crash even further. And as margin debt is currently at an all-time high, this is also quite concerning as well. So overall, things aren't looking great for the US economy. In fact, they're not looking great for many economies around the world because they are somewhat mirroring what's going on in the US economy. Even the UK economy is facing inflation and there's been quite lax monetary policy here as well, but not to the level that there has been in the USA. So overall, let's say things aren't looking great, but there's just one more thing to talk about that could cause a market crash, just to cheer you up even more. And that is, of course, Rony Rona because that's the cause of all of this, basically. Since the start of the pandemic, things have just gone a bit insane all around the world in many different ways. But Rona could still have an impact on causing a market crash because when new variants are announced, the market gets scared. Just look at when Omicron was announced at the end of 2021. And the reason for this is the market doesn't know how bad that variant's going to be. What impact is it going to have around the world? And more importantly, how are governments gonna to react to this? Because there's no global approach to dealing with this. How even in the UK, England, Scotland, and Wales can't agree on how to do things, let alone the whole world agreeing how to do it. And basically this is causing problems all around the world. Local economies are suffering. We're also having supply chain issues because countries are going into lockdown or the countries aren't in lockdown. It's just causing problems all around the world. And the announcement of another variant could just send things into a tailspin and basically exacerbate some of the things I've already talked about. So Rona is kind of like the black swan that's still going around that could cause a lot of problems for the market. So overall, things aren't looking great for the economy, and I'm sorry if I've depressed you in this video. Honestly, it wasn't my intention. I was just trying to stick to the facts and say that things aren't looking great. But what can we do as investors? Well, basically, you've got one of two options. This isn't financial advice, by the way. The first one is you can sit on the sidelines with your cash and try and buy the dip. 
but this is risky because you don't know when the dip's gonna come. Now for me personally, I'm going with option number two, which is continuing to buy in. And the reason why I'm continuing to buy in, continue my regular monthly investments is one, I don't know when it's gonna happen. Two, I don't know when the dip's gonna be. I don't know when we're gonna hit the bottom of the crash basically. And number three, I don't know when the recovery is gonna start. So trying to time the market is a bit of a fool's errand really. And even the professionals struggle to do that. So us retail investors, yeah, we're probably not gonna do all that well on it. So that's why I'm continuing to invest, basically trying to dollar cost average throughout the whole process and throughout the crash. I have got a bit of extra cash that if I do think things are heading towards a dip or we're just starting to come out of a dip, I may put a little bit more into the market, but I'm still continuing with my regular monthly investments because I'm going with the adage that time in the market is better than trying to time the market. But that's just what I'm doing. It's also going to be interesting when things do start to crash is how so many YouTubers and other financial gurus that are seemingly out there at the moment are going to deal with this. Because for a lot of people, this is going to be the first recession they go through. For me personally, I've already been through a recession. I was, what, 21, something like that, when the 2008 recession hit. So I've experienced it firsthand. I know what things look like. But for a lot of people, they're saying, oh, we're going to hold, we're going to have diamond hands and all this. Is that actually gonna come true when it comes to the actual fact that they look at their investment portfolio and they see that everything's down? Now, for me personally, my investments are down. The reason is I started to rebuild my portfolio in December 2021 because I wasn't happy with what I was invested in. So I'm seeing that everything in my portfolio is down and I'm kind of accepted the fact that throughout 2022, I'm probably gonna be looking at red everywhere. But hopefully in the long run, this is gonna pay off for me. And as we come out of this and in maybe 10 years time, I'm gonna look back on it and think that was actually a really, really good decision. But who knows? But let me know in the comments, what do you think? What do you think is gonna happen? And what are you planning to do about it? I'm always interested to hear other people's opinions. So thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, a like would be really much appreciated. Really much appreciated, really appreciated. So thanks so much for watching guys. Stay awesome and I'll see you in the next one.